Hi guys, live from my expensive studio in Central Texas, USA. It is Rusty78609 in a pink shirt today. And it's too big, but that's all right. I always wear too big clothes. And Romeo, my lovely pet, is right there chewing on a chew stick. And I decided not to interrupt him and put him in front of the camera again because he seems to be quite contented. And when he's contented, I'm contented. And that's the way it is around here now. <laughs> but I got to tell you, when you have a puppy, you better have chew sticks. <laughs> You're not going to have anything else. I, mean, I believe, honestly, that that dog could chew through a rock. I mean, I mean, I gave him a chew stick yesterday, and I thought, you know, hell, that'll last all day and two maybe two or three days well he, he destroyed that chew stick pretty quickly I, I was i was very impressed but anyway we went we went walking this morning he hadn't hate he still hadn't made a mistake he still ain't poo pooed or pee peed in the house one time the day the day we arrived on thursday <clears throat> and this is sunday september the 4th 2016 at 10 10 11 a.m or 10, 12 a.m. now. 10, 12 a.m. Central Standard Time. This is day four of my life with Romeo the Miniature Poodle. And uh, I have to tell you, so far it's been okay. I mean, it's, it's uh, you, you know, you notice it. I mean, as a single individual, you know, I'm 71 years old. <clears throat> full-time living in an RV this is an RV been doing this for 23 years this is my home base etc 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 and uh, this is my first pet in over 40 years I'm almost sure maybe longer I'm not sure a long time and I've lived by myself I've been married three times or more and uh, been living alone or by myself for shit uh, 25 years, let me think, well, nearly 30 years, really, nearly 30 years, and, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing that I'm able to adapt, or we're able to adapt to each other, uh, but we have, it's, uh, so far, I mean, but I've made a decision on something, you know, one of the things I do regularly, and have done for years, and I will continue to do it, is I get up in the mornings and go walking for exercise, and uh, and I've been I tried for yesterday and today to take Romeo with me, my puppy, my miniature dachshund, and uh, the it's okay, it's okay, but it's distracting. To be quite frank with you, I mean I tried the leash and all the other stuff, but a dog is a dog is a dog, and this is a puppy. So what the puppy wants to do every now and then, he wants to stop and smell stuff and sniff stuff and wander off and do all this kind of stuff and I do not blame the dog at all. That's being a dog, which is fine with me. I want him to be a dog. And uh, so what I'm going to do starting tomorrow is uh, I'll go do my walk for exercise and Romeo will sit here in the house and if he wants to whine, that's fine. He'll get over it. He'll learn that I go walking every morning and that's the end of that. And then what I'll do is uh, twice a day or more, because I don't have anything to do, I'm retired, just me, I will take him out for a walk two or three times or more during the day. And he'll get his exercise, and I'll get mine, and we'll both be happy. That's what you call harmony. Boo. You know? And so that's what we're working on now. Uh, as far as the fence that I've talked about, uh, you know, if I had a fence... It, it wouldn't it wouldn't make any difference and the reason is I have talked with people here in this area and uh, you know they have some of these people had or have or had chickens and the hawks get them they, they do and, and and I know I've seen them I've seen a hawk kill a baby deer a fawn you know when they're just born within say two or three days when they're just the mother has them in a hot what she thinks is a hiding place and what the hawks do, I've seen it happen. They swoop down. They can't lift the animal up, so they just take what they can get from the animal while it's alive. It's a brutal kill, a brutal kill, you know. 
and uh, you know sometimes the animal just dies later on but the hawk gets what he wants a piece of the time and uh, and then leaves the animal to die a miserable death but uh, and could he do that to this dog right here sure easy easy if I had that dog outside in a fenced in area he that dog would never know what hit him because that the a hawk and an eagle their eyes I've been told I read this they say they are so good that they can read newsprint at a mile in other words they could actually read a newspaper from a mile away supposedly is that true or not I don't know but it I've seen them so far up in the sky that you can barely see the hawk with your human eye and I've seen them swoop down and catch a, a mouse on the ground this big I've seen them do it with my own eyes anyway I do live in a rural area of central Texas and you know we're out here on the fringe there are there is a lot of wildlife we've got coyotes we've got foxes we've got coons you know we've got wild cats and feral cats and all kind of wildlife out here and uh, you know putting him out in a fenced area you know could the animals get to him like that probably not, I'm not so worried about the the coyotes and the foxes and the cats and the other stuff as much as I'm worried about the hawks I really am so we're gonna stop that right now because uh, I'm only gone from the house to either go grocery shopping or four times a month I do a wine and beer tasting event and, uh, and I'm gone for four hours can he adapt can my Romeo adapt to that you bet he can and if he has an accident in the house so be it I will just tend to it but so far uh, he's been amazing he just hasn't made a mistake last night as a matter of fact he sleeps right next to my bed and uh, he usually for the see Thursday I got him Thursday so Thursday night he slept all night Friday night he slept all night last night he slept nearly all night about four o'clock this morning uh, he's able to get up on the bed where I am so he did he got up on the end of the bed and he was sitting there and it woke me up and uh, I thought well what the hell does he want now and uh, anyway he was just sitting there and then he walked around and so I thought well hell maybe he wants to go outside so anyway I picked him up and got a flashlight we walked outside I set him down. And uh, sure enough, he pee peed and walked around a little bit and then poo pooed. And I thought, well, good for you, boy. Pat, pat, pat. You get a 10 for that. So anyway, I brought him back in. He fooled him out a few minutes and chewed on a chew stick. And then he climbed back up and went to bed and slept normally. And I did too. And that was the end of that episode. So for those of you who are thinking about getting a pet, I'm just giving you the straight scoop so that you'll know uh, what to expect. Now, this again, this is a miniature poodle i think they're probably the exception to the rule as far as doggy odor uh you know they're not a hundred percent without doggy odor but i mean uh, it's much 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 less than some other breeds uh and here i wormed him this morning for the, for the oh i don't know what it is it's a generic wormer i guess you'd call it that gets you know hook worms it doesn't do heart worms you got to do you got to go to a vet for that but it does hook worms and trichina and some other general worms and stuff. And, and anyway, she gave me a, the breeder gave me a, a bottle of stuff that she mixes up for her, the one she raises. And I really don't even know the name of it, but uh, what, it's just a liquid, a thick liquid. And uh, what you do is, is you take this syringe and it's uh, by the pound and for a, a six or excuse me five pound dog it's one and a quarter there's a little one two three four one two three on the side and you give him one and a quarter like right in here like just that much and and fortunately it has a good taste the dogs like it so you don't have to fight them to give them this stuff you just stick it in their mouth and go and guess what he's wormed and you do this you do this uh, three times in a row you do it you do it on like like I'll do it today I'll do it Sunday Monday and Tuesday this time and then two times after that because she uh, she she was a, we were a little late with this one so she said go ahead and do it for three days in a row it won't hurt them so that's good so I'll do Monday or excuse me Sunday Monday and Tuesday this time and then next month I'll just do two days and then we do you do that for a year 
and then you can back off on this particular type of wormer and uh, they have a heart wormer that you can get that does fleas and all kind of different worms and stuff and, and you pay them high dollar it's, it's like $95 for six months and uh, my son tells me that what you can do is reduce the size of that dosage and use that for a longer period he's coming this morning to give me my my, my oldest son's got two dogs that he's had for I don't know eight or ten years he knows a lot about dogs so he's coming to visit and I'm sure he will bring me up to speed on dog but anyway this is the pink shirt day and I'm glad it's still you know, these are very comfortable shirts I gotta tell you I got them at Walmart cheap as dirt they were like three dollars a piece and uh, I'm, you people who have been watching my videos for a while know I'm probably one of the cheapest people you've ever met in your entire life, and uh, uh, and, and 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 necessarily so. Well, not really. I I mean I could do things differently. I could, but I don't. I mean I I I don't. I just am not wasteful, and I think that comes uh, from growing up in a rural area of Texas where we were just frugal. That's all. You just didn't waste anything. You didn't. I grew up in that environment. I formed my habits. Uh, in that area and environment and they've never left me I've always you know when I throw something away you don't want it and if I ever have a garage sale don't even bother coming by because everything I've got is worn to the bone baby I mean even clothes and shoes don't even think about getting my old shoes so having said all that today is September the 4th 2016 the fourth day with Romeo and uh, all I can tell you is he's uh, <laughs> it's a change, okay? It's a it's a change. I know it, and I'm not kidding you. But uh, would I would I take him back now? Nah, no, <laughs> no, no, uh, no. He's he's in for the duration. I just want to be sure that uh, that I do all the good things to take care of him. And I may I may have him neutered. You know, uh, uh, deball or you cast or not cast free, but they neuter them. I don't know what they do. Anyway, I may have that done uh, sometime. And the reason is, whenever a male, excuse me, whenever a female comes in heat, a female dog comes in heat, males can pick it up for about a mile. You know what I mean? They can pick it up. Okay, they can pick up that smell for about a mile if the wind's right. Well, if he was outside and he was a little older and he picked up that scent, he's gone. He's gone. There's nothing you can do. That dog is poof, gone. And what he'll do, he'll get in with a pack and the pack may kill him, you know, because there'll be a bunch of other males there. And uh, so thinking about that and having talked to my sister this morning who had a male dog that that happened to, uh, or, well, not really that, the dog didn't get killed, but the dog basically went bananas every time he smelled that scent and it was a real difficult period for him. they finally had to have him castrated because he just went he just he just went crazy so uh you know then that and that does some other things of course you know without the testosterone in the in the male system you know they're not as great he's going to be more docile uh he'll be less male less maleness you know what i mean less aggressive and uh for me age 71 and, uh, you know, I, I would rather have a more passive animal than, a, than an aggressive animal because I don't plan on breeding him, even though he's registered and got all kind of papers and stuff. I don't plan on breeding him. And uh, so we may, we may look into that. Now, I'll let him be a male for a while, and we'll see how it goes, and I'll talk it up for the next few months and see what happens. But when I go in to get his rabies shot and get his tag and get him uh what they call it chipped where they put the chip in i'm going to do that and uh yeah we'll get, and uh, he'll be okay i think and uh as time passes uh i guess we'll just get to know each other and know our habits i'll get up and go walking and come back and he'll be waiting to go do his thing and and uh, that'll be great he, he's uh but I have to tell you, if you have a if you have a puppy, get plenty of chew sticks or chew stuff, because they do like to chew. 
and thank God I have an adequate supply because, uh, you know, my son told me, he said, get something for him to chew on. So I did. He told me what to get. I got, got some. And boy, was he right. <laughs> he's over there chewing on that chew stick right now, I'm telling you. And, and he's, he's at it. It's, this is business with this dog. <laughs> but anyway, thumbs up. Carpe diem. Adios. The saga of Rusty and Romeo continues day four. Look forward to day five tomorrow. Anyway, y'all have a good day. Thumbs up. I did that already. Adios, etc. Bye-bye.